Hey guys, Dr. Ben here. Thanks for jumping on. Um, just getting ready in the mood going uh, deer hunting with my two older boys next week. So uh, I had my camo on, just thought I'd jump on. I, looking at a little bit of research uh, this morning, wanted to get you guys caught up on what is out there, what we're, what we're seeing, what the statistics are showing, and just kind of the trend that we're, we're looking at going across the country. So uh, a few kind of Friday ramblings here. Love having you guys on. Go ahead and pop down below where you're watching from. Um, we love seeing you guys um, as local as uh, Colorado here, all the way out to Asia and Africa and, and Europe and everywhere in between. So love having you guys. If you have questions at all, pop those down below. Uh, any any uh, thoughts? I know kind of had a couple um, couple thought-provoking questions um, on the title for this one. So if you've got any thoughts on that, uh, let me know. But again, hey Mac there in South Carolina, um, again, um, Let's get into it. There was a study uh, that we were looking at, and this was done on veterans. So 800,000 veterans in the United States, 500,000 of them roughly had been vaccinated, 300,000 of them had not been vaccinated. And what we're looking at is basically, um, you know, should boosters be mandated? Are they gonna be mandated? You know, in the theory that we're mandating uh, shots so that people are protected and so that they can, they can keep working and all those things. Um, hey Mary, great to see you. So, um, yeah, what, uh, if that's the theory and what we're seeing with the dramatic decline, even by six months in the protection, um, then we're kind of like, well, in that theory, boosters will have to be mandated. I mean, it, it just really is because, um, you know, they talk about the, the protection. Hey, Paula, good to see you. They talk about the protection. And uh, we know, especially after looking at this study, that there's not much protection left. So they looked at six month follow-ups. Moderna, um, the Moderna protection, and this was for people uh, over 65 years of age, went from 89% at day one down to 58% by month six. Pfizer went from 87% uh, down to 45%. And Johnson & Johnson went from 86% to almost nothing, 13%. I mean, you've got a better chance uh, if, you've, uh, if you've licked counters all your life and, and don't wash your hands, you've got a better chance of protecting yourself uh, than, than six months with that J&J. &J. And that's why uh, even on the booster side, they've said anybody that's ha had the Johnson Johnson, they need to get that booster even at four months, not at the six months like they're recommending for everybody else. So uh, what we know is at six months, the protection drops dramatically. And so what that means is that, and um, you know, we've got some, some veterans on here, I'm sure. And so uh, yeah, this, uh, this study, you know, we look at a lot, of, a lot of veterans, but you know that veterans, mostly guys, um, and a lot of these are older in the VA system. So they were looking at 800,000 um, males in the VA system over 65 and there was a dramatic decline in protection. Uh, so in theory, if you're going to mandate somebody uh, to, to get the shot and by month six you know it's almost gone, um, then, then in, in that theory, they need to go forward with mandating boosters. Will they? I, I don't know. And you know, I, hopefully not because, you know, again, we need to have that that ability to uh, know what's right for our own bodies, and and uh, you know if there's certain cases where it can't, should we lose our job for that? You know that gets into into a, a whole nother category of taking care of um, our bodies and our own selves and our families versus you know the greater good, and we could go on and argue and argue uh, both sides of that for a long time. Uh, but what they saw. Um, for uh, what was interesting with this study was that what they did see was that there was a decreased chance in death for people that were vaccinated versus unvaccinated. So they call them breakthrough infections. So somebody have had their shot, they had a breakthrough infection and uh, people with Moderna was 76% less likely to die, 70% uh, less likely with Pfizer and 52% with Johnson & Johnson. So interesting in 
this study uh, with veterans, they were less likely to die with COVID uh, even if they got that COVID infection and even at six months when it when their protection dropped dramatically. So um, why is that? Not sure. You know, is there still some protection uh, against the uh, you know, extreme case? I, I don't know how that works, but you know, in theory, that's that's what we're seeing. Um, so now they're recommending boosters for Johnson Johnson even at month four uh, because I mean it's basically gone. That protection is gone by by month six. Um, so will it be mandated? Uh, should it be mandated? Uh, hey Michelle, good to see you. Um, more breakthroughs with the shot than without. Um, you know. <laughs> I, I don't know true stats on that. It's very hard to tell. Um, you know, hard to hard to tell which research is we're getting is is actually the the true research and which is you know coming from from different perspectives. So this was a study VA system. Um, so he, here's the deal: if it was just straight up, you know, we need to have everybody as much protection as possible. We know that by six months, it's dramatically less. You know, at at forty five percent like Pfizer, you might as well be taking vitamin D. Get your vitamin D up close to sixty to eighty every day, and you're going to have that much protection. Um, so there's there's a lot of other things that are working. So we know it crashes. We know it goes down very very quickly. So in theory they're going to need to mandate the booster. Um, what's that going to look like? How, how will that work? Um, I, I don't know, uh, but you know, I, I wouldn't be surprised if that does come down the pike here sooner than later. Um, yep, uh, so uh, you know, it, interesting, you know, it, there, the Israeli study, thanks for jumping on, um, Nancy and uh, you know they're, they saw it in, in the Israeli study too with the Pfizer. Most everybody in Israel uh, has the Pfizer vaccine. It went down dramatically. So another interesting thing now that the uh, five to uh, eleven year olds are allowed to get their shot, allowed uh, encouraged to get their shots. What we're seeing is that uh, a lot of places like New York City, Chicago, um, all over the country are giving these kids hundred to two hundred dollar uh, gift cards money um, that to go get their shot and so I think even Chicago's having a day of uh, they're canceling the entire day of school so that um, these young children can do that so you know on that side you know how much should we be paying people to do something how much do we have to uh, have to pay people to to take this kind of an action you know and for me um, whether you know my yeah, my parents uh, they decide to get the shot I know a lot of people that have older people everything and and you know that that's someone's personal opinion all of those things you know you have a high risk of, of issues whatever it is but when we're talking about kids that have basically zero risk you know unless they're under cancer treatment or have diabetes something like that you know pretty interesting that they're um, paying these kids and their families to go through that so I, I don't know where that's gonna end up either um, it was just an interesting story I saw this morning that um, you know they're paying a hundred and to two hundred dollars for uh, for these kids to to get th through there. Hey Mary, uh, thanks for the kind words. Um, so uh, you know either either you lose your job or you can get paid. Uh, so it's kind of kind of interesting. Um, and add another comment there, uh, Samantha. So they've not um, kept track of who has gotten it twice or more. Um, they have contact traced enough people to have some data. Um, so, you know, I, that's the interesting part. I have not seen any any data yet. Um, you know, I, if anybody has, pop that down below. I haven't seen any data yet as far as like three, six months. Um, you know, the boosters came out in August. We were getting them out here in Colorado. So we will see over the next few months how that plays out, you know, how long that protection lasts. Um, but I, I think, again, even in that the study with the veterans they were talking about was that uh, you know, this variant, this Delta variant, changed the whole landscape of the vaccines. And so I sent an email out. So if you guys haven't gotten on my email list, pop that down below. Also, anybody that is on my email list, check your junk mail. It ended up in my junk mail, my office manager's junk mail yesterday. Um, so we sent out an email yesterday, and I was talking about... Um, 
you know, just the effectiveness of, of the shot and some different things, but, um, you know, that uh, with this variant totally changed. So why are we happy with just giving the exact same booster um, when we know that it didn't do very well against this Delta variant and the next variant, it probably won't do very well as either. So, you know, there should be this continued research going on, continued formulation, if they truly are wanting to, um, you know, have as much protection as possible, uh, they should continually be evolving what they're doing, but it doesn't look like that's happening, which is kind of interesting as well. Um, and, let's see, any other, um, yeah, Joanne, great to see you. Okay, so that that's kind of kind of my thoughts for the day. Um, you know, odds are a booster mandate is coming, but unfortunately, the booster is no different than the regular, which isn't going to protect people any better from the Delta. So, if they're going to mandate that, I wish that they one that they wouldn't, but that I wish that they would go in and um, actually uh, actually improve it, make it make it more um, more able to. Uh, for you know that 70 year old guy that's overweight that has diabetes and high blood pressure and uh, isn't going to change his eating isn't going to take vitamin D isn't going to do anything else I wish they would go in and change it so that there would be better protection when the next variant comes around so um, that's some thoughts there and then as far as the uh, the how much to pay people or pay kids I don't know that's a that that's a, a interesting one there and who's paying them anyways you know ultimately it's us as taxpayers we're paying people to do that so anyways I've got my uh, got my camo on I'm all, getting all excited gonna take my two boys deer hunting next week uh, so uh, just excited to uh, to get out I'm gonna go do a hike today so you guys enjoy yourselves um, Amanda can you recommend ways of detoxing the body or those who get the shot so the thing that I can say Amanda on blood work that we've seen with follow-ups with patients is that it's very inflammatory not necessarily a toxin um, to to detox, but you've got to get that inflammation down. That's one of the big things that we have seen follow up blood work. So um, really keep working on your inflammation, keep that down, and uh, no matter what you're doing, it's gonna give you a lot more protection no matter which way you go with things. So you guys stay strong out there. Good to see you and have a great weekend.